So I will be focusing on uh, our people's manifesto, our developmental priorities, the petroleum sector, I'll focus on the downstream sector and the upstream sector, and then I will conclude. The people's manifesto. And our manifesto is a social contract between the people of Ghana and the NDC. And as social democrats, the NDC seeks to create opportunities uh, for all of us. Our manifesto uh, is to create opportunities for all of us to develop, our uh, Ghanaians to develop to their full potential. The NDC will, will focus on delivering on the following developmental priorities over the next four years. Fixing the economy and uniting against poverty, promoting human development, providing infrastructure for accelerated growth. And this is where my interest will be today. And I will create sustainable and decent jobs uh, with title the Jumapa and promoting good governance, anti-corruption and accountability, and deepening international relations and foreign affairs. My focus will be on providing infrastructure for accelerated growth. And the area will be on energy. And I'll start with the downstream sector. You will see that I'll be talking on some of the key achievements of the NDC government in the downstream sector. If you recall, one of the boldest decisions we ever took was the petroleum price deliberalization policy. At the time, there was mountain debt, state debt, the accumulation on continuously. And if you are a BDC here, I think you recall that vividly. Foreign exchange losses and premium payments for emergency cargoes. We took a bold decision and brought Ghana into the petroleum price liberalization. The verdict is out. In the last 10 years of the price liberalization, and according to Seaboard, so an annual report last year, for 10 years of prior, uh, the price liberalization, we have saved 3 billion Ghana City as a result of that policy switch. And that, to me, is very, very important. And so you saw that this is one of the areas that led us to S-Line. We'll talk more about it. It also led to some of the critical policies we made to try to address the challenges of the banking sector, especially the payments uh, that were really threatening the banking sector. We also focused on public-private partnerships in Bost. Uh, petroleum products distribution architecture. This helped to reduce loss, losses to the taxpayer and also help ensure product availability and, and increase the reserves. And, and, and that, to me, is also very, very important. One of the very clear challenges we had was that on an annual basis, the storage facilities that private companies were putting petroleum products were having annual losses of 40 million Ghana cities. We stop that immediately through this uh, arrangement and continue to basically strengthen TOR to provide its core mandate, making sure we have enough strategic stocks for eight weeks. And the NDC is proud of that record. We are focused and poised to have a new boss, and I'll talk more about it. That will really provide the infrastructure to propel and support the private so sector to succeed. We also worked to retool Tema Oil Refinery. We replaced the more functioning furnace to make sure that the refinery was operating at uh, full capacity. Um, I mean, obviously, obviously, the story is not the same today. The RFCC to, was also basically uh, prepared to, to work to produce some high-end value products like petrol and LPG. The current practice where the refinery is operating on the capacity as well as not utilizing the RFCC, is something that obviously the NDC is poised to, to change. One of the, the focus on, on Tamar Oil Refinery was all this, is as we come uh, into government, uh, hopefully uh, January 17th, is to basically not only simply talk about making sure TOR is going to work, but basically find the lasting solution. We all know that the problems of the oil refinery has always been government, government interventions, has been management, it has been really the right investment. How do we make sure that we take practical steps to address that? Dealing with that, getting the right investment, and then making sure that we do that with the workers. So at the same time, the uh, oil refinery will operate efficiently, 
add value, expand, and make sure we can protect very important jobs at the Maui Refinery. And that is the NDC's focus. One of the areas we are also proud of in the downstream sector is a very critical area, the supply of premiums. As if you recall, premiums was such a problem for fishing folks. And what we did was that we brought a novel, what we call the landing beach committees, and made sure that premiums was something that is addressed. And what did we do? We made sure that it was fishermen who were actually managing premiums that was going to them and not politicians. The story today is dif different. It is political apparatchiks who are ma managing premise. And that is exactly the reason why fishermen are not getting these very critical products. And so we are going to change that. We are also going to make sure that, as we did, all the things, that, uh, the implements they need, the outboard motors and other very important implements, are something they get. And so there's a lot to talk about, but because of time I will move. I'm sure a lot of them will come. And so there are a, lot of, a number of policies because of what we've been able to do that we are going to focus on. We will ensure value addition to ensure petroleum resources, uh, 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 that we add value to the, our petroleum resources. We're already taking those steps. We we'll position Temaoya refinery to process our crude oil. But as I said, we are not just going to do that simply. We are going to do that in a way that is sustainable, that is profitable, that protects toward Temaoya refinery jobs. We will restore boss to its core mandate of holding national strategic stock as we have done before in order to cushion the erratic price increases associated with the absence of fuel stock in the country. We expand the Atuabu gas processing plant, as you know, uh, to meet the national demand of LPG. And I'll talk more about the plant, but you know what we were able to do. Because we stopped flaring gas, because we bought Atuabu gas, we were able to basically save the importation of LPG by 50%. What we are going to do by the expansion is to continue to basically increase domestic production of LPG. We will aggressively promote LPG use as a preferred cooking fuel with expanded local manufacturing of cylinders. And um, I have to really talk about what is really of interest to the industry. The cylinder recirculation and all the issues around it. The NDC is coming to power with the clear interest of Ghanaians at heart. Our intention to basically bring the uh, LPG recirculation is not never to basically collapse businesses. We are going to work with the industry. We are going to make sure that LPG uh, stations, People who have really sustained this country for years are not going to be told overnight that your business is collapsed. No. We are going to do it with them and make sure that their business are sustained and work gradually alongside this policy. That is the NDC's approach. We revert to the use of landing beaches committees, and I've already stated that. And so, basically, I think there's a lot to add, but let me go straight to the upstream sector. You know, we asked a fundamental question in the petroleum sector, I remember in January 2009. There has been oil discovery, two oil discoveries, and let me make it clear. The NDC's record is 21 oil, commercial oil discoveries. But we asked a fundamental question. How are we going to be different? How is Ghana going to make sure that when we start producing oil, the revenue from oil is going to really be protected and that the people of Ghana are going to benefit. What are we going to do to make sure that these Ghanaians will participate in the industry and they will be the real beneficiaries? What steps are we going to take to make sure that we have a regulator to protect our interest? And what other steps can we take to make sure that there's a plan in place to take us along in terms of how we protect and, and build our gas, and once we brought Ghana in the gas era. And so every legislation, every regulation in the petroleum sector, I'm proud to say, was brought by the NDC. We passed the Petroleum Revenue Management Act 815. I'm sure that PIAC is here today. On an annual basis, when you hear PIAC talking about monies that has not been accounted for, that's the NDC's handiwork. We intend to strengthen the PRMA to make sure there's clear accountability. 
we brought about and overhauled the PNDC law 64 and 88. That has served the country. But once we entered oil production, we needed to revamp our law. We brought Act 919, Petroleum Exploration Production Act. And what, what was that important? It was important because it brought in its wake transparency in how we awarded blocks. It brought transparency in everything we did. It is sad to say that its implementation under this government has been abysmal to say the least. I won't talk about the fact that almost all the bidding rounds they have tended to do because of underhand dealings has failed. Don't take my word for it. Ask Yena and ask some of the big players. We passed the local content ally to empower Ghanaians. And the verdict is out. The Petroleum Commission tells us today that because of this ally, 2204, $1.5 billion dollars of contracts that will otherwise have gone to foreigners has gone to Ghanaians. That is a government that cares about Ghanaians. We approved the gas master plan. And what is it about? It's a plan, a 40-year plan to guide how we build infrastructure. And if you see what we did, we brought Ghana into the gas era, we sent the pipeline to Pristia, we brought it to Takradi. When we left this government who came to power, a very small assignment. Extend the pipeline to Tema. Because in two years, he and I is bringing gas. They went to bed. And the gas came and was stranded. And Ghana paid for it. That leadership is for the NDC is coming and bringing back. The story of the Petroleum Commission is also very important. We needed to make sure there's a a regulator to protect our interests. I'm proud to say that since the passage of the Petroleum Commission Act, this critical institution made out of scientists and important people has saved Ghana over $10 billion in drilling that was not necessary in questioning contracts. Sadly, sadly, when you see the Minister of Petroleum come to Parliament and tell the people of Ghana to basically weaken the Petroleum Commission in the AK agreement, and I'm proud of uh, other, uh, other uh, private sector institutions that stood up for Ghana. I'm very proud. So, I mean, this is the next step of the NDC handiwork. As I said, we brought Ghana to the gas era. We increased oil production. And the record is very clear. We set out a policy that there will be no flaring. People thought it was impossible, but we did it. What went into building the gas infrastructure is something very important. Some of the steps that are supposed to have been taken the last four years to make sure the expansion of the atomic gas processing plant. Another very important step has not been taken. The NDC intends to come in and make sure that we expand the atomic gas processing plant, increase LPD production, as I've stated. But more importantly, it was because of the, a lot of the steps we took. We increased investor confidence. And as a result, you saw three major oil productions. I ask you today, for four years... Not one has been added. He and I sank off Virginia, I mean, and the argument that has constantly been made, and let me make it clear. We made a decision to bring FPSO, Atamel's FPSO, Kwame Nkrumah, and the ENI project. We understood what was at stake. The ENI gas was non-associated. But we had to ask ourselves, do we produce that gas or we leave it? Is there a better option? Yeah, we thought it was, because it was better than continuously importing LCO. And I'm sure my good friend, Jinapa, will tell you how much savings this country has had since all this gas came in. And it's part of the solution, the reasons why we now have the light on, because of this critical project. So when we tell you that we solved them, so we solved it with financial solution with Esla. We solve it with bringing Ghana into the gas era. And we solve it with power additions that my good friend will talk about. And so when we say that the next NDC will prioritize the use of oil and gas resources to propel isolated economic growth, job creation, and rapid industrialization, we know what we are talking about. We said that we are basically bringing gas. But gas will be used for power production beyond the use of power production. We are now going to focus in making sure the quantum leap in industrialization that has eluded this country. 
we are going to use gas to propel it. It is not by asking that we focus our gas, sending it to Pristia. And today I'm proud that industries in the mining area have begun using gas. We've started having glass industries that are producing a lot of other things using gas. The future of gas into petrochemical industry and other plants can only be implemented by the NDC government that started it in the first place. We are going to set Ghana on the path of achieving a production target of 1 million barrels. And how are we going to do that? We are going to do that by making sure we begin to attract investment again. We've done it before. Making sure that we take the necessary step to make sure people who are coming to Ghana to invest in billions are comfortable. We have to also be very clear about where we are now with COVID and the realities of our time. What are the, some of the incentives are we going to put in place to make sure that investors will come to Ghana? And we are very clear about that. Our focus is to make sure we aggressively pursue our drilling uh, our efforts in the Voltaic Basin, making sure we do that, and all the other basins to aggressively bring the record discovery of 21 that we did. And we believe that with the strategies we have, we are going to get it. We will adopt policies and programs that will ensure that all Ghanaians derive maximum benefits from our petroleum resources. And this we have done. It's very, very, very important. I mean, I told you the verdict on the local content. And I told you the story of Ghanaian companies who are on the sea today in the petroleum sector. And why? Because people are trying to hunt them down to get their businesses for crony. The NDC will not do that. The NDCs will support the private sector to basically create jobs. Because that is where jobs are created. That's our focus. That's our focus. So ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm close to my time. But clearly, currently the oil and gas upstream sector is jaundiced, characterized by spreading more governance, increasing opacity of the decision-making process, resulting in lack of investor confidence, restoring transparency, improved credibility in the upstream regulatory institutions, recreating the eroded conducive enabling environment to restore confidence in this critical sector. It's a daunting task that requires strong commitment that can only be provided by John Dramani Mahama in the NDC government. But ladies and gentlemen, the legacy we left for this sector speaks volumes. We cannot wait to be at the helm of affairs to put Ghana back on the path of energy security, and prosperity.